Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are at Old Sled Works. We're still at Old Sled Works in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. Now, we were just recently, here, well, I guess about almost two months ago now, I was here with Cindy J. I will drop a link right up somewhere here in the corner for you so you can check out the last video. Um, we were here right before Halloween, so I'm excited to see if things have changed for Christmas. Um, it's a massive store, so we're gonna um, pray for the Christmas. Beep, beep. It's right over here, guys. Let's do it. Alrighty, guys, here we are on the interior, obviously. Um, first up, I do see, of course, some little putts esque houses. I don't know that these were original putts, and of course, we're seeing the left end, Holly and Barry. Um, and then we're here behind it. This actually really caught my eye are these electric Christmas candles. And the reason they were so eye catching um, is, is because they do have like the vac metal gold on them, which is very unusual. In my opinion, I've never seen the gold ones. They were priced at $10 each, which I think is very fair. Um, you know, normally you'll see uh, the red or the like the cream. Um I don't know. If I would have gotten those, it would have been more for a craft project. And I literally have two sets of candelabras that I have yet to craft on. So <laughs> up next, I do see this really cute. It is a made in Taiwan piece. However, it does have its original packaging, which I thought was really cute and charming to it. Um, unfortunately, and what I'm trying to do here is look for a price tag. I could not find a price on it. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and leave it behind. I will say this. I don't think that it was it would have been too terribly expensive given the prices on the other items. And that's usually how I'm going to judge a price. Um, if I was more interested in the piece, I definitely would have taken it up front. Um, but I was kind of like on the fence about it. And then it not having a price really sealed the deal for me. Here we have a little Santa. Now, he would have originally had a bubble light. Um, obviously, it was missing. Up next, I do see this ceramic. It is a made in Japan. It is a Frosty the Snowman. Um, it, he's absolutely adorable. I love the big red nose on him. There were several pieces um, that were made to this line. There's, I believe, salt and pepper shakers, a cookie jar, um, just a plain figural piece. I initially put him back. We might, we just might, come back for him later. Now here we have these very 60s, 70s. They're like that thinner blow mold uh, material. They were cute, but again, it would have been more of a uh, a wreath or assemblage fodder, and I am overflowing with it, so I did leave them there. <laughs> All righty, guys. Now I do see this flocked Santa. Now the flocking obviously is a little faded. It probably would have been a brighter red at one time. It is a Napco piece. It is dated from 1961. It does have real fur. Chances are it was rabbit. Um, I thought it was cute, but again, the pricing, it just wasn't where I would want it to be as a reseller. And then this tree topper did, in fact, catch my eye. It is a Holt Howard. Um, now, this, it, it would have had a bottom. Um, and the vendor does have it labeled as possibly a Holt Howard. It is a Holt Howard. Um, and you can tell by the little ponytail here that I'm about to show you. You see the gold bow on top. And then she's got that little ponytail swoop. Um, Holt Howard did not do a lot of the ceramic heads for these tree toppers or angels or cone dolls, if you will. Um, I think they did about two or three sculpts. So it's she's a very easy one to identify because it's a very unique sculpt. And with that, the curse or the jinx is broken. So we were able to get a basket. And I will say this, especially for a larger uh, antique or vendor mall, um, I love the fact that they have baskets throughout and they're not just available at the front of the door. I do see this blow mold frosty here. And I love the fact that his nose was three dimensional. Um, it seemed to be a separate piece. Now, in our previous video, we we were here in this Christmas room, and it's it's pretty much dedicated solely. Well, I will say about ninety percent Christmas. So of course, we want to stop in here, check it all out. Uh, I do see that blow mold Santa. He was highlighted in the previous video, so I'm not going to focus on him. Though I do absolutely love him. I think he's super cute. The vendor did, in fact, have a sale going on. 
you know we love a sale. It is 25% off all items priced at over $10, if I'm remembering correctly. And again, what would a Christmas video be here at the Cult of Vintage if we didn't feature a, her a Herald Gale Santa Claus? I just love them. I love the fact that it's real wool. So we've got all kinds of little bitty pieces in the display cabinet. I was seeing if there was anything new or maybe something, you know, that I had saw previously that I didn't really want to get because it was a little too early to be purchasing the Christmas items for resale. Though I will say, um, now that I've been doing this for over a year now, I, I can't believe that. Um, I will, in fact, start looking for Christmas throughout the year and not think, oh, it's June. I'm not going to buy Christmas. No, I'm going to pick it up year round. And whether that gets added into the collection or whether that's, you know, added into the reselling pile, um, it just is determined by the piece. Now, I am seeing some really unusual jewel brights here on the tree. Unfortunately, <laughs> the two that I wanted weren't priced. Speaking of ornaments, we are in a different vendor's booth at this point. We do have some uh, West Germany ornaments here and I love these thumbprints. I was having a little difficulty getting like this thing was attached to the tree. Let me tell you what. Um, so I'm going to set the camera down and we're going to refocus on the three ornaments that I do decide to go ahead and pick up. And didn't I say we might be coming back for that frosty? Yes, we did in fact go ahead and pick up the frosty musical box. He's only $12. He's in great condition. I think he's super cute. So yeah, we do decide to go ahead and pick him up. Now, this vendor's booth is totally dedicated to ephemera. There is some vintage ephemera in here, though I will say the majority of it does appear to be antique. Um, and we're talking like 1900 and 1920s. So it's always fun to go through here. You just never know what you're going to find. The graphics are amazing. They do, obviously, you saw some uh, like a cartoon strips there. We've got greeting cards. This was kind of three dimensional. It's a little creepy. I don't know. Child is busting through the blackboard. What is going on in this school? Um, but 1900s, uh, so I just love the graphics there and there you saw, um, a hallmark, obviously that is going to be more vintage than antique, but aren't these graphics fantastic? I love the artwork. There's just something very charming about them. Very organic, if you will, everything is, you know, digitized now. And I think it kind of takes out that human element. It, it's, it lacks the emotion, um, sometimes that actual physical artwork or studio artwork can convey. So yeah, we're definitely going, look at this tree. How charming. It's a little difficult to try to, <laughs> everything. they have it, they, everything is secured in plastic bags and, and cardboard backers, but they're a little slick. So it makes it a little difficult to kind of go through. And you saw there like a happy birthday napkin. Like I said, it's all ephemera. They've got some amazing pieces. Um, I could go through every single, every single piece, but time was short. love it. Look at that old Whitman one, Black Cat. Again, there's just something about the hand-drawn artwork. Now, in last week's video, I did find a larger one of these um, in gold. It was in a little bit better condition. It was $8 for the larger one. These were priced at $3 each, which I think is very fair, especially if you're going to use them as a craft supply. Um, unfortunately, I was more interested in those as a, a resale object, but uh, the condition wasn't the greatest on those. Like they weren't, oh, oh gosh, I'm going to be shady. They weren't done all that well. <laughs> So I did decide to go ahead and leave them behind. I really do like that Noel. It is obviously a candelabra. It is chalkware, however, which makes it quite quite heavy. Um, so the shipping cost could be a, a bit of a nightmare. I love these cellophane wreaths back here. I was kind of like, can I turn that into something? Um, but unfortunately, it's 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 the material itself isn't um, the sturdiest. So attaching things to it could make it far more fragile than I would be comfortable with. Now here I am seeing some mercury glass candles. I'm not going to lie. I was like, can I get in this cabinet? And they're like, it's unlocked. And I was like, oh. <laughs> 
and they've got some more candles over here. So I do get into the cabinet. Here we go. It's like it's magic. Whoa. Um, and upon further inspection, I found these candle fitters. I do have some mercury glass candles, so these are perfect because the mercury glass have a tendency to be a little bit thinner than traditional uh, wax candles, so you do need those fitters. A lot of times you're going to see masking tape wrapped around them to kind of accommodate that. Um, those, you know, the bottoms were broken. These look to be in better condition, but then taking them out underneath the, you know, the bases were again damaged. Um, it's a shame every one of the sets was damaged. I'm not comfortable um, providing those for resale. You know, I, would I buy them for myself even though there was damage on the bottom? Yeah, I would. Um, but again, selling and shipping that, it makes me really uncomfortable. So I do decide, unfortunately, that we're going to have to leave the mercury glass candles behind. Now, I do see this rotocast plastic, um, meaning it is hollow on the interior. She's a silver and a white angel, obviously. Um, she's unusual. I've never seen the angel in that colorway before. So I do decide to go ahead and pick her up. And again, there's some more mercury glass candles. It is a set of three. Now, I could see in the reflection in the back, yeah, that one is substantially. Yeah, so they're all just, yeah, no, can't do it. Because again, they are thinner. So trying to put those into, you know, a, a, a taper candle holder, you could further damage them, even if you were very gentle with them. I love this. They have it labeled as an atomic um, ornament. I think it's a little bit more celestial, in my opinion. This one is amazing. It's very trident esque with a little bell on the bottom. Obviously it is mercury glass. It did appear to have an adhesive there on the front. Um, it's priced at $30. Now I do believe that there would have been something attached. Was it glass or was it maybe like a tinsel or something like that? I don't really know. At $30, I didn't want to pick it up. If it was a little bit cheaper, I might've been tempted to get it and then add back onto it. Now, these are actually Riesling wine bottles. I think that they're absolutely adorable. Um, here we've got some great colors, and I think that they are perfect for Christmas. Unfortunately, the cream you can see there on the cat's muzzle, it, it had a quite a bit of scratching to it, so we do leave the cream behind. The pink and silver I was immediately attracted to. Um, you know, they're priced at $8 per bottle, or 10 for the silver. I think it's 10 for the pink, and it was 8 for the red and the cream. Of course, we've got to go with the more expensive ones, but these are great, especially if you want to put like a poinsettia in them. So if you have your mercury glass picks, those will look amazing in it. And yes, these are stained. You know, it's not a ruby red glass um, wine bottle. There was another one. So I did decide to check that one out. But unfortunately, on the back of that one, it was really scratched up. But we did get the pink and the silver. Now, you guys know by now I do love some Anna Lee. I prefer the creatures more than the people. Here we have the gingerbread man. He's priced only $22. He does have his original tag here, the paper label. The nice thing about the Anna Lees is, is that usually, I would say about 98% of the time, you're able to identify the year that they were manufactured. He was produced in, oh, geez, memory failing me, um, 2001. So he's nearing vintage, but I did leave him behind because I have enough. I have enough. But look how cute this little sleigh ride is. It's priced at $40, which I think is really reasonable for a collector. And there probably is actually some resale value on them. Um, some of the Annalise can, can get quite pricey, especially the original ones um, from the 50s, the late 50s, early 60s. They've, they've been around for quite a while. They are a great company, too. They are on Instagram. I'd recommend checking them out. Now here, this is like a street light. Um, this very much reminds me the, I don't know. Um, it's priced at a hundred dollars, which I think is very reasonable. I mean, you know, those things, God love them. They were used year after year after year, um, and probably were discarded the vast majority. However, this one withstood the test of time. Um, but it reminds me of the town I grew up in and they used identical ones to, to that candle there. 
Here I find a little Christmas corsage. Unfortunately, it seems to be missing quite a bit of the mercury glass beads. I really was not feeling or in the mood to want to have to reattach them, though I will say um, that if you were to put this in a Christmas arrangement, you wouldn't notice it. Um, it was priced at $6, so I do decide to go ahead and leave that one behind. However, I was seeing some of the foil reflectors. These are more of the floral ones, but what really caught my eye was this plastic angel tree topper. And I was like, hmm. Now she does have some condition issues, but I think overall, yeah, see how that light got left in there and she melted? Um, I was like, I wonder if it works. You know, the damage to it, I think aesthetically adds to the piece. It's not so bad um, that I think that it detracts. So I set her to the side in the hopes that I would be able to find an outlet. Now, once you find one or two things in a box full of plastic baggies, you know you got to dig through the rest of it because you're like, what else is hiding in here? What else? What else? <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't really find a whole lot else um, that was mixed in to the bags, but that's okay. Here we found some more fo foil petal reflectors. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm like dreading watching this part of the video because I'm like, oh Lord, am I about to see something that, that I didn't see in real life? But no, no, I think we did pretty good. I think we did pretty good. And yes, Michael did put the foil reflectors back. Um, I'm looking more for the ornamental ones versus the actual utilitarian ones. Um, the utilitarian ones, they're cool, but yeah, the, the, the more ornamental are the ones really where you're going to have the value unless you found them new in packaging. Um, then that really, you know, drives the price up. Alrighty guys, so here, boom. She does in fact work. Like I said, I think that the damage does add to the aesthetic value. If it was on the face, probably not so much. Um, and then I was looking at it and I got a little concerned about that melting spot in the back. So I did decide to leave her behind. Well, guys, here is everything that I did get. We obviously got the two wine bottles. We got Frosty. We got the Holt Howard, the Angel, the ornaments. And I did pick up some bubble lights. Unfortunately, two of the three don't work. <laughs> Well, that is it today. Here is our basket shot. It's not the biggest of hauls, um, but I am pleased with everything that we got. I especially love the ornaments, which are going on my aluminum tree. Yes, in fact, Michael did get an aluminum tree. Um, I'm a little sad about the bubble lights, I, I gotta admit. Best score, I think, is definitely the whole Howard. I'm excited to see what she goes for, and Frosty is adorable. So guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.